On the morning of the 13th of February 2017, Kim Jong-nam was murdered at the Kuala Lumpur International Airport. However, just 50 kilometers away in the city of Pataling Jaya, a man was ambushed by a group of more than 10 masked personnel. Right here where I am standing is believed to be the last known location of Pastor Raymond Ko at time of recording. His car was brought to a halt right about here. Just 42 seconds later, he was gone. And this quiet SS4 neighborhood was never the same again. One year has passed since the disappearance of Pastor Raymond Ko. The mystery has still not been solved by the police. Who abducted Raymond? Why was he abducted? These questions still haunt the Ko family until today. Some civic groups and the Ko family believe that this abduction could be a case of enforced disappearance. According to the International Convention on the Protection of All Persons from Enforced Disappearance, the term is described as the arrest, detention, abduction or any other form of deprivation of liberty by agents of the state or by persons or groups of persons acting with the authorization, support or acquiescence of the state. The abduction had the swift Hollywood feel. It was like a scene straight out of CSI or NCIS. Here is the chain of events that followed the abduction. Two eyewitnesses lodged a police report on the abduction just hours after it took place. Ko was uncontactable and reported missing later in the evening. 15 February. Cole's children, Esther and Jonathan, visited the scene of the crime, going door-to-door -door in the neighborhood to request for any closed-circuit television camera recordings of the incident. The recordings were then found, isolated and handed over to the police. Also on the 15th of February, the police raided Harapan Community, a non-government organization established by Raymond Ko. The authorities hung around for a few hours and questioned the staff about Ko asking questions about his work and allegations of the proselytization of Muslims. 18 February. While the news of Kim Jong-nam's murder continued to dominate the headlines, Susanna Liu, who had yet to receive any ransom demand or word whatsoever from her husband's abductors, issued a press release demanding that the authorities step up their investigation. 5th March. A former Uber driver by the name of Lam Chang Nam made contact with the Ko family and demanded a ransom of 30,000 ringgit. Mere days later, the police confirmed that this was just an attempt at extortion. 7th March Then Inspector General of Police Khalid Abu Bakar announced that the police were pursuing a lead on the case and told the public to stop talking about it as it may jeopardize the investigation. 17th June Police claim that they shot dead one and arrested three other individuals involved in an alleged drug smuggling syndicate in Kedah who are allegedly connected to Ko's abduction. 25th July The police announced that the kidnapping may have a connection to a syndicate operating out of Thailand. 19th October Suhakam begins their public inquiry into the disappearance, calling upon more witnesses to come forward and testify. The hearing aims to establish whether Ko's abduction was a case of enforced disappearance. 20th October Susanna testified at the Suhakam hearing that she found the police investigation focused more on trying to establish whether or not Ko and his NGO were involved in proselytization rather than his disappearance. Sri Ram, who co-founded Harapan Community alongside Raymond, said that Ko was a marked man and that he had been surveilled since receiving a death threat in the form of two bullets in 2011. An event organized by Ko's NGO Harapan Community was raided by the State Religious Affairs Department Jais earlier that year. The basis was that the event allegedly involved the preaching of Christianity to Muslims, an allegation that has been denied. 30th October IGP Khalid Abu Bakar admitted that Ko's children did find the CCTV surveillance tapes before the police and there may have been lapses by the police in their initial investigation. 14th November Former Pataling Jaya City Hall Councillor Peter Chong, who was missing in action from the 7th to the 15th of April, claimed that he went on a search for Raymond. He testified that he arranged a rendezvous with a stranger in Hat Yai, Thailand but was abducted by a group that identified themselves as a Muslim youth organization in the area. He claimed that his abductors held him for several days before releasing him. 23rd November 
Police admitted in the Suhakam hearing that the abduction appears similar to a police or military operation. 15th January Current IGP Ahmad Fuzi Harun informed Suhakam that Lam Chang Nam, who had tried to extort the Koh family in the March of 2017, was charged with the kidnapping of Pastor Koh. 16th January Suhakam suspends the portion of their public hearing on Raymond's disappearance. The Suhakam Act 1999 states that the Commission shall not inquire into any complaint relating to any allegation that is the subject matter of any proceeding pending in any court.